started out this uh, trip to the Philippines visiting uh, a Bible listening group. I was just impressed with how difficult a life they have in the natural. Hearing the Word of God has brought hope and blessing upon the people and their village. I felt the compassion for the people in the listening group, the sincerity in their worship, the intensity that they had in reading the Word of God. As the children were listening to the Word of God through the proclaimer, they were following along and reading orally the same scriptures. So it was really feeding two parts of their being. One, they were hearing the Word of God in their own mother tongue, but also that they were expressing the Word of God in their own language, in, in their own voice. We understand our language first. We speak our language, and when we speak our language, we can write our language and read our language, and that makes a culture. The language of God is love, and the language of love is written in the Bible. If you know your Bible in your own language, and if we have that culture grounded on the Word of God, there would be love, there would be acceptance, and there would be that passion for you to be a better person. The first villages that we visited were tough situations. They were poor. There were a lot of children born without fathers uh, in the home. And you could see how much, as we talked with uh, Raymond about that, how much that hurts him to see that. And yet he presses on. and. What I really took from that is, what will I take back to my hometown? Who are the hopeless people in my community that most of society has given up on? To have the same commitment that I see in Raymond to take God's word to those people and to never give up hope and to love them. Luca, ang magandang balita ayon kay Juan. So I've been encouraged to go back and be a better missionary in, in the place where I live, serving the people. We got to go and see the recording of the Tubuli language. They're about 90% done, so they've been working for several weeks. This was the first time I was able to observe an actual recording going on, and it was impressive. The coordination, the detail, and the excellence of the people behind it. We heard the testimonies of those that were doing the recordings. It is a privilege for me to have this project. It is not for me, but to all the body types. I am doing postpart. Sometimes I my tears fall down because as a pastor, I know what Paul has done. Thank the Lord for the life of Paul. Certainly one of the most impactful parts for me was how much it meant to them to hear their own language and to know that they were contributing to something that would last for generations within their people. To record the Word of God, I told my wife, you know, it's a lifetime going back home in heaven. You still, my children and our generations still hear my voice and they know that Jesus is. Yes. When they got to listen to it and to 
to create it and to bully, that spoke really to their hearts. But it also, I think, makes them feel valuable. It makes them feel like God loves their people. That was really an eye-opener for me, to understand that and to hear that directly from those people. After they asked us to pray for them, and they just laid out their hearts. And I believe the Holy Spirit moved. All four workers that were part of the recording team began to cry, but it really seemed to meet a need that they had at that particular time. One of the best parts of this trip was to see the other segments of what Faith Comes By Hearing does. Uh, the distribution of the proclaimers today here on Samal Island. Today we visited an illustration by the Filipino Bible Society and Raymond and how he goes about training those that will be using the proclaimers. Anybody who listens to the Word of God, there will be an impact. The Word of God will convict them. He walks through about a 20 to 30 minute presentation explaining the gospel significance of sharing God's Word and the commitment that he's asking them to make. After three months, they report back to him. Raymond is very polished in what he does and has a significant amount of influence amongst these pastors. Uh, they walked through a model. He gave them an example of how to run a group meeting, and then he actually asked them to sign a form and commit to doing it, to being faithful to the, what they've been entrusted with, with the proclaimer. And you could see the excitement in the people uh, to have that opportunity. It's a big game changer when they can bring the word in and play it for a large group of people. This audio Bible is a very help for us to minister to people who are, they are not able to read, but this faith comes by hearing audio Bible, they respond to, to the word of God more effectively. When you lose your mother tongue, or if you don't go back to your roots or recognize it, you lose your total heritage. So we are reviving, we are revisiting these mother languages so we can worship God in our own identity, to bring that culture back. This is our God-given heritage. We have to love it. We have to learn it. In order for Faith Comes By Hearing to be in the position that it's in right now, it takes quality people on the front lines that are literally willing to lay their lives down to further the cause of the gospel. The long-term success of Faith Comes By Hearing and what it's able to do in extending the, the kingdom of God and fulfilling their part in the Great Commission is excellent. And only because of the great people that they have on the ground in the countries that they're trying to reach and touch. It's super encouraging to see what this ministry is doing and the way it's enabling God's work to happen throughout the world. I praise God that this vision is coming back to all of us, not only for our country, but in all the countries of the world. Glory to God, may Jesus be known, may the Bible be known through the proclaimers and through the written word of God. Amen.